Hello, welcome to an episode of the Fish Locker out on the boat. This is the boat's first journey, it's really just a test run. We have uh, serviced the engine, I've painted the hole, I've done a couple of little jobs, and this is just making sure that everything is working before the fishing season comes. Now, as you can see, it's not a very nice day. We're out just in the Carrick Roads, which is just between Falmouth and Mylar, and uh, I don't know if you're going to get to see throughout the day, but there's gannets diving all over the place. So I thought I'd maybe try for a couple of mackerel first and then we'll go out and see if we can catch something bigger. Oh, there's something down there. Bad size for bait. All I'm doing now is I'm just rigging my gear up to go fishing. I've run my line all the way through up all my eyes, making sure to go all the way through. And at the moment, I'm just fishing for mackerel bait, but eventually I'm going to be fishing a sliding ledger rig on a zip slider for possibly, potentially bullos or conger, and maybe even a ray. In which case, at the moment, all I need is a barrel swivel on the end. But because I'm going to be using a zip slider later on, I'll put that on first. The first thing that I always put onto my line is a bead because throughout the day I don't know you might not be paying full attention or you're busy watching something else or something's happening and you're busy winding in and you're winding to the point where your swivel reaches the top of your rod now if you wind if you wind your snap swivel into your end eye sometimes you can damage the end eye whereas if you've got a bead there a bead generally will stop it and protect the protect the end eye of your rod tip a little bit of a safety and I have that like that, so that when my weight's sliding up and down, again, so I don't damage the knot. When I'm fishing for mackerel, although you can probably see on the sounder where they're going to be, it's better to search the water. So all you do, uh, is when you're dropping down, Say for instance if you're in 60 feet of water, drop down 10 feet, bounce around, see if they're there, drop down another 10 feet, bounce around, see if they're there, drop down 10 feet. Oh look. That is going to be a perfect live bait. If you can see there. Cornish Chardin. Keep that alive for a while and use it as a live bit later. I don't know if you can see this, but the first drift I took, I drifted along and I marked mackerel about there. So I carried the drift on until I stopped seeing mackerel. So I've steamed back up around and you can see where the fish are in the finder. That means that they are 60 foot down. So rather than steaming straight back up the same line, you go out and round them and then back and drift on them again. But we're just coming back into the fish now. You can see the fish on the fish finder here. And I think I've definitely found them. That 
was three sardines. This little joey mackerel here, that is the perfect size for a live bait. He's definitely going down for a bass. If I can get the hook out. Plenty of fish down there. This one, as you can probably see, has already been hit by something. That's probably a bass or a pollock that's had a go at that. Now these, every time that I've been dropping down, it's just been 10 to 15 feet past the leader. So I know my leader's 10 feet long. So all I do is drop what I think is 10 feet past the leader, and there they are. Another sardine. The only problem with these fish is they leave scales everywhere. We'll do the same again. The leader, then what I think is 10 feet after the leader. There they are. A nice mackerel this time. What I'm gonna have to do now is because there's a few decent sized mackerel in there and they're thrashing around the water in there is going to get deoxygenated and fouled up pretty quick so if I wanted to keep some of those fish alive I'm going to have to take the bigger mackerel out put them in a bucket and keep the little ones in a separate bucket Some of these really are perfect sized mackerel for a couple of fillets. I've got a few mackerel for bait now. Kept some decent ones to fill it up. And I've got a few nice little ones alive in a bucket. So I'm gonna head out now to a reef and I'm gonna see if I can find something bigger.
Seems to be very happy, does he? Don't care though. There he goes. I'm now going to show you how I hook up my live baits. I've got a nice mackerel here. All I do is I take the hook, put it through the bottom jaw, and bring it out just in front of between the eyes, like that. Now that fish will stay on there alive for ages. And with the live bait rig that I showed you in the video, all I do, just lower it straight to the bottom. Then when I hit bottom, give it five or six winds real quick, so you suspend it about six to eight feet off the bottom, and then just let yourself drift. At the moment, I'm just about to start a drift over a piece of reef. So let's hope there's a couple of bass and some pollock there. That's the bottom. One, two, three. There we go. Set your drag. And just wait. This there is my live bait. And you can actually see it there on the fish finder. As I said, suspended just off the bottom. And all I'm doing now for a bite. I'm now going to show you my racing rig. Now we're drifting over rough ground with a bit of kelp. Perfect place for cuckoo and balanrass. So all I use is just a very simple one hook paternoster. As I showed you in the video, make it up with a bait so it swings. You won't get any tangles. Six to eight inches to a nice stinger. And on there all I'm using is just some ragworm. Keep my ragworm in a little tub just to keep them dry. Because believe it or not, if you get them wet, they die quicker. Take the ragworm by the head, that's the fatter end, and just thread the hook all the way up. I like to finish maybe an inch before the end. Now pull the head up above the hook, the hook eye, and because it's a uni knot, like I told you with the uni knot video, a little bit of a tag end acts as a bait stop. There you go. All I do with these is just check the drag, just drop it all the way to the bottom, bounce and hit pop, and then hold it a few inches off. What you're waiting for. It's a very sharp wrap. See if we show you some fish. Just found bottom, so I'm just holding it a couple of inches off the bottom. And you're waiting for a very sharp knock. And then go into it. Now at the moment, it's a high tide and we're fishing in about 56 feet of water. These, these little fish, if you bring them up too quick, their swim bladders blow. So it's better if you take a little bit of time to bring them up. That way they go back easier. As the terrain that we're moving over is very up and down, every 30 40 seconds I'll just drop down just to find out where the bottom is and then bring it back up a little bit. Put something on the rassy rod. Being very close to this fishing gear here though. You can always generally tell if you haven't got a fish finder or if you haven't got a GPS, you want to know where the rough stuff is, look for the crab pots. Right. Little tiny ball and rass. Anyway, that's been down for a good 15-20 minutes now. As you can see, still very much alive. Go 
go around and have another drift. It's a bad fish. This definitely feels like a ballon rass. Like I said, you don't force them up because if you bring them up too quickly, the swim bladders blow. Nice little ballon rass. I do love fishing for wrasse. They, uh, they give a really good bite, really positive bite, and they scrap like mad, even little tiny ones. There's a lovely golden, golden ballon wrasse. Stunning colours on them. Let's take a look at their teeth. He's eager to go back. All I'm doing there is I'm watching watching the fish finder to see what the ground's doing. I've just come up a little bit of a peak, so I've just took a little bit of lining on my live bait just to make sure that I don't get too close to the bottom and get snagged. Now the drift is starting to slow down, we're only drifting at about 0.8 of a knot. Now drifting with a live bait, I like about a knot a tide. As it's starting to drop down, we will uh, we'll put the anchor down. What can also happen if you're fishing a live bait too close to the bottom in an area where there are cuttlefish, a cuttlefish can come and attack it. And all you'll see there is you'll see one bite and then it'll just get heavier and heavier and heavier. And all that's happened there is a cuttlefish has come in and attacked it and stuck to it. You can tell sometimes as well when you, if you bring a live bait in and it's got damage to the back of its head, that's generally a cuttlefish. <laughs> 